really got heavily into social media because I ended up doing a piece for the Today programme on whether I was too old to join Facebook in 2007, <laughs> uh, which was a fabulous experience because somebody set up a group when I complained about a lack of friends, um, and um, uh, I got thousands of friends. And I remember going upstairs. I also joined MySpace at the same time. I went upstairs and said to my son, who was then about... 15. Oh, look, boy, look, I've got a friend on MySpace. And he said, Dad, that's Tom. He's everybody's friend on MySpace. Um, I quickly, uh, though, decided uh, after a while that Twitter was going to be the more useful tool as a journalist. I just had a quick look and found, though, my first tweets, just to show how much of a learning process this is. There is a service where you can find out your first tweets. Mine were in March 2007, pretty early adopter. Um, I, I'm tweeting, weather grey, hope it does not rain at Lords where I am spending the day. A little later, Dull but dry, a bit like Twitter. God, this guy's dull. And finally, a classic English day at Lords. Collingwood has just got his century, and I am only slightly pissed. Um, <laughs> what I quickly found uh, was that first Facebook and then Twitter became essential journalistic tools um, in three different ways, really. Um, I'm just looking at a tweet here. Uh, from 2008, quite early, May 2008, just reported an earthquake in Beijing. Wonder how large it is. Off to check out the USGS site. That's by a, a, a tweeter and blogger called Robert Scoble, Scobleizer. Uh, he was the first person to report the massive Chinese earthquake. I got up in the morning, saw that on Twitter, rang my news desk, which is supposedly a fairly efficient news desk, they didn't know about the earthquake in China. It came out of Twitter first, and that was my first indication of how powerful that could, all, that, that, that could be. One of the first stories I covered was, and I, I was there when Steve Jobs pulled out the first iPhone from his pocket, um, which uh, we were mo I was mocked for, for holding it as somebody in wrote in the paper as if it was a piece of the true cross. But... Um, <laughs> I do think that was an extraordinary moment in, in technology, and everything that's happened since then has, kind of, has been transformational in all sorts of ways. When you think we're not just the touchscreen revolution, the tablet revolution, uh, products like Kinect bringing, um, th in effect, what used to be a $100,000 3D scanning technology into homes at, uh, at 100 quid or so. This incredible revolution in the way we use computers that only dates back five years or so, um, from having uh, become accustomed to a keyboard, uh, a monitor, and a mouse, and that was the pattern, that all suddenly being swept away. It has been an extremely rewarding process for most people, the change in their lives that's come uh, through the encroachment of social media. I get, I've, I spent two hours uh, on the radio this morning, talking to local radio stations about it. And time and time again, I came up against the, but isn't it destroying conversation? But isn't it unsafe? But isn't it, isn't it sad that, you know, we don't talk to each other anymore? That was said about, by the way, that's my timer telling me I've had my 10 minutes. Um, that was said uh, about every new form of technology, about uh, the telephone, about television, uh, about email. Um, we have to accept it's there, it's not going to go away, there are going to be more social networks, um, and I think we've all got to learn our etiquette and how to use them well. <laughs>